Hey, what's happening, guys? Um, you know, I really like these cob panels that we took out of that camping lantern. And I thought we should do something with them. How about we make a security light? So I think I've got basically everything we're going to need here. We've got a nano. We've got our cobs. We've got a uh, MOSFET. Uh, we've got a capacitor. Resistor. But what should we use as our trigger? Should we use a uh, PIR sensor or the ultrasonic sensor? I think we'll go with the ultrasonic sensor just because they're a little more fun. Have you ever considered really how they work? They send out an ultrasonic pulse and time it as it comes back. And what they return to the Arduino is a pulse of varying widths. Let's uh, take a look at it on the scope. I think you'll see how interesting it can be. Okay, I have it set up here using the uh, new ping library on a Nano. And I've got the scope attached to the echo pin. So, if we look at the scope here, if I can get them, everything in one window, probably not. Let me try. Okay. So what you can see on the scope is the pulse width. And if I move my hand closer, you see the pulse width shrinking. And that's what it that's the information that it is returning to your Arduino. It's simply timing that pulse width. Pretty cool how they work. Okay, before we can get into the high current stuff with the cobs, we just need to set up a test, like a basic proof of concept. So here's our Arduino. We have five volt feeding to the positive rail ground, of course going to the ground rail. Here's our HCSR04 sensor, hooked up to VCC and ground. And then we have the trigger going over to pin two, the echo going to pin three, and pin four, which will be our trigger pin for our cobs, is going over to this red LED with a 1K resistor going to ground, just to turn on to make sure everything's working correctly. And then I also have <laughs> a uh, capacitor that I had in backwards there. Good thing I didn't plug it in. Going across the rails just to stabilize the voltage. So let's take a look at the code real quick and then we'll come back and uh, check it out. Okay, here's our test code. We just have the one library, new ping. We have our trigger on digital two, our echo on digital three, our alert which will turn on the lights on digital four, our max distance is set for 200. That's something that the library needs to know. The max distance of the sensor says it's between 4 and 500 centimeters. Yeah, and that 200 is in centimeters. This is our on time, which for right now I've just set for 2 seconds. In our setup, we have our serial comms. We set our alert pin as an output and we drive it low so the thing doesn't come on instantly. And then we have our loop. So the first thing we do is we create an integer variable called test and we set it to whatever the sensor is sending back. And that's that sonar.ping underscore cm parentheses. That'll give us the reading in centimeters. And then we're going to see if it's within an acceptable range. So this is about a foot and a half, 50 centimeters. So we say if test is greater than 50 and, and you need to use the two ands next to each other, test is greater than zero because sometimes it just gives out a zero reading and we don't want it to just fire for no reason. Then it's going to come down here and do a, a digital write alert pin high. It's going to wait for the time on which is what we specified here and then it'll shut it off. Then we just have a delay here because we don't want this thing constantly pinging the sensor. Then it's just going to print it out to um, the, the serial port for our debugging purposes. When we put this all together we can really just shut that off.
that's really all there is to it. So we'll check and make sure this works, and if it does, then we'll set it up with the cob. We'll power it up. Give it a couple seconds to initialize, and it's not pointing at anything that's close enough, hopefully. So now I'll bring my hand in. We see the light comes on for two seconds. Again, I'll bring my hand closer so you can see it. Oh, it's, it's going on my microphone cord. Okay, so it's working, as you can see. Now we can work on taking out our little LED, which was just for the proof of concept, and putting in our cob lights. Now we can't power them directly from the Arduino. It's The Arduino is only out, going to output, what, a maximum of 40 milliamps per pin. And now I can't find my... Oh, here it is. So we're going to use this MOSFET and an outside power source of about 7.2 volts so that'll be a two cell lipo we need that and we're going to need a resistor that 1k resistor would work but it won't give us enough light um, I think what we're going to use is a 470 ohm resistor if I have any that are big enough um, big enough as in wattage so that they don't overheat so let me look for that and we'll come back and we'll set this up all right we figured out our arduino end of things now let's talk about our power end of things we're going to have to power this like i said from an external power source to put out enough power to light up our cob strip so i've just done a little test jig here so that we can go over how the mosfet works now this particular mosfet is an end channel enhancement mode MOSFET and the pins are gate, drain, and source. So our gate is our control. Our drain is where we're pulling the power from and the source is where we're going to. Now for our little demonstration here, let me zoom out. I got the power supply set up for 7.2 volts with a maximum 2 amps and we have a current limiting resistor in there. So if we set our gate high, the LED lights up, no worries. But since this is a MOSFET, if our pin goes floating, the MOSFET stays on. So we need to set our pin low to turn it off. Now a little quirk of MOSFETs is capacitive coupling that can also turn your MOSFET on so just be aware of that now that we have that we can put it into our system first let's make a change to our Arduino power here we have five volts going out to our power rail what we need to do is change that to V in going to our power rail so now the Arduino is drawing its power from the rail as well and since we're doing that we don't want to pull the 7 volts from the power rail anymore we want to pull it from the Arduino so we'll just put from 5 volts to VCC here and we're good to go. Next up we'll bring our MOSFET over to this breadboard and uh, doesn't really matter where we sit it we can just sit it right here and then we need our drain from pin 2 to our VCC rail so that's good. Now we need to address our cobs. I have to dress the ends of those wires so we can plug them into the breadboard. So we'll hook that, whoops, bump the camera. We'll hook them to a couple of header pins. And the first thing I want to do is just tin those pins. A 
like that. Then I'm also going to tin these wires. Then all I need to do is reflow them. And we'll have our cobs. Ready for the breadboard. Cut that off there. And our cobs are ready for the breadboard. All right, when you're prototyping a, a circuit, it's important that you test each individual part of the circuit before you test them all together. That way, if you have to change something, you're only changing one thing at a time. That was an Amber Alert from North Carolina. Okay, so what I was saying, it's important that you test each part of the circuit separately. So when you make a change to one thing, you're not making a change to everything in the circuit. So we have our power supply hooked up, 7.2 volts, uh, 2 amp current limiting. And I played around with a bunch of different resistors to get the level of light that I want. And what I have come up with is 400 ohm resistors in parallel. And if we plug them in, we get some very nice bright light and we're only pulling 165, 166 milliamps. And that's on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, on 16 LEDs. Nine and a half milliamps per LED. Not bad at all. That's going to give you a long life. And these things are not going to be on that long, so it's not going to be that big of a problem. So then what we need to do is plug in here, make sure we do this in the correct direction, because our LEDs are diodes after all. Then our little uh, conglomeration. of resistors plugs in like that and then we're going to take a wire from the source of our MOSFET <laughs> if it'll stay in there as I was saying from the source of our MOSFET to the anode of our cob and lastly we need one more jumper wire. Now oh, here we are. So it was already waiting for me to go from pin four to our gate. And that should be our security light ready to rock and roll. Okay guys, I've got everything set up here and I've got it about as dark as I can in the middle of the afternoon. It's uh, 3.30. So, it's powered up, it's ready to go, and all of a sudden a burglar comes in front of your security light. Now of course I only have the timer set for two seconds, but you can easily change that and make it last. Whoops, I'm bumping the camera, I apologize, trying to get the lights back on here. You can change that and make it whatever you want there's a link to the code down below and everything works out really well I hope you enjoyed this it's a simple project an easy hack these are really nice cobs they don't even get hot uh, thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe big thanks to all the patrons that's it I'm out peace